Well, let's continue our lecture on section 14.3 of Sergey Ling's Basic Mathematics by talking about transpositions. So to review, we have these, um, we're talking about the sets of integers between 1 and n, we call that jn, and we have the mappings called sigma that are permutations transforming each number in n to another number where two numbers are not the same, so we don't have two numbers pointing to the same number. And at this point, we're going to introduce theorem 1. Well, let's first talk about what a transposition is before we do theorem 1. So, uh, we have transpositions interchange two distinct numbers, i not equal to j, and leaves the others fixed. So a transposition is represented by the tau, and this is a transformation that switches two numbers. So it switches two numbers. So an example of a transposition could be 1, 2, 3, 4 goes to 2, 1, 3, 4. And this transposition is switching the two first items. Okay. If we note that transpositions, if you apply the transposition to itself, you're just going to reverse those numbers back. So actually the transposition is its own inverse, which is nice. Makes math a little bit easier. And so let's go ahead and dive into theorem 1. Theorem 1 says that every permutation jn, every permutation of jn, so every permutation of jn uh, can be expressed as a product of transitions. A product, and by product he means a composition. of transpositions. Okay, so what this means is that if we had sigma, which is some permutation, we can always rewrite that as some product of a bunch of different transpositions. Okay, how can we prove this? It's a little bit easy. It requires a little bit of recursive thinking, so we're going to say proof. Okay. Consider we have j, so we have sigma is a permutation of jn. Any old permutation doesn't matter, okay? And then we look at sigma, the last element in sigma n, and that's going to give us k, okay? If n is equal to k, okay, then we don't do anything. We just multiply by i. Otherwise, if it's not equal to k, then what we're going to do is substitute in the transposition, um, we're going to call it tau n, and tau n is going to switch n with k. So it's going to switch n with k, okay? Such that tau n of sigma, if you pass n in, you will get n back, okay? Once we've done that, we note that the tau n sigma is indeed a transposition where the last element is fixed. And so we consider how would we solve if we were only looking at the, the elements up to that last element. So we, we look at like what would be sigma of n minus 1. Okay, that's going to be some k. If that n minus 1 is equal to k, so those two numbers are the same, then we don't have to do anything. Otherwise, we're going to do the same thing. If n minus 1 is not equal to k, then we're going to apply tau of n minus 1 is going to switch n minus 1 with k. Okay, and so that will give us tau of n minus 1 times tau of n of n minus 1 gives, gives us to n minus 1 and also tau of n minus 1 times tau of n times, oh I forgot a sigma, sigma of n will also give us n. And you can see we're building this up from left to right. Eventually we're going to get a series of taus, so tau 1 all the way up to tau n of sigma should give us the identity, okay? And so we can rewrite this by multiplying both sides, or not multiplying, applying compositions to both sides. So if we did a leftwise multiply of tau 1, so we multiply both sides by tau 1, let's kind of move this over here. So tau 1 times tau 1 all the way up to tau n of sigma is equal to i, and we're multiplying the left side, so we have tau 1, okay? So these two become the identity, and so we have tau 2. So there's a tau 2 there, and so we can multiply both sides by tau 2. 
times tau 2 all the way up to tau n sigma. This is going to give us tau 2, tau 1 of i times i. So it's just tau 2, tau 1, right? And we can go keep going that direction, and eventually we're going to get sigma is equal to tau n composed all the way to tau 1, okay? And so we have expressed sigma as a series of transpositions applied to each other, okay? Now suppose that sigma was i. In that case, we're just going to say that the <clears throat> sigma is expressed by no transpositions. So sigma has no transpositions. Okay, and that's pretty reasonable to say that. Okay, let's do an example. Let's kind of walk through an example here. We're going to try to take sigma equals to 1, 2, 3, and this maps to 3, 1, 2. Okay, we want to express sigma as a product of transpositions. So we're going to have tau, we're going to call it tau mu the transposition, which interchanges 3 and 1. So this switches 3 and 1 with each other. Okay, and so tau sigma, let's actually write this out. So it switches 3 and 1, so 1 goes to 3, 2 stays the same, and 3 goes to 1. Okay, so tau sigma, if we apply that together, so we do the sigma, so 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1, so 1 stays fixed. 2 goes to 1, 1 goes to 3, so 2 goes to 3. 3 goes to 2, 2 goes to 2, so 3 goes to 2. Okay, and as you can see, this is actually the transposition. We're going to call this transposition um, tau prime. Okay, and if we apply tau prime to this, we get tau prime times tau times sigma should give us the identity. Let's see if that does that. So 1 goes to 1, and then top, it's tau top prime, right? So it does it to itself. 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2, so 2 goes to 2, and then 3 goes to 3, okay? And so we can rewrite sigma as tau prime times tau, okay? All right, now another example. Suppose we wanted to do this more complicated one with four elements. So we have sigma is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 1. Okay? In this case, we can have tau 1. Tau 1 will switch elements uh, 1 and 2. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4 goes to 2, 1, 3, 4. Okay? And so tau 1 sigma is going to be equal to... 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, so 1 stays fixed. 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to, hold on, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 3, so 3 stays fixed, so 2 to 3. 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 4, so 3 goes to 4. And then finally, 4 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 2, so we have 4, 2. So that's tau, tau 1 sigma. We're going to introduce tau 2 now. Tau 2 is going to flip uh, elements 2 and 3, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4. And so we have tau 2, tau 1 of sigma is, let's see, 1 goes to 1, 1 goes to 1. That doesn't change. 2 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 2, so 2 goes to 2. 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 4, so that doesn't change. And then 4 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 3, so 4 goes to 3. And you can see that tau 2, tau 1 sigma is actually going to be tau 3, which switches the last two elements. And so tau 3 tau 2, tau 1 sigma is equal to the identity, okay? 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 4, and 4 goes to 3, which means 3 goes to 3, and then 4 goes to 3, when 3 goes to 4, 4. So that's what it is. And so we can rewrite sigma as tau 3, tau 2, tau 1, okay? Where tau 1, tau 2, and tau 3 are defined there. Which works, and this is great, okay? But let's say, let's do it a different way. This time we're going to apply tau 4. We're going to start with sigma, and we're going to say tau 4 is equal to the interchange of 1 and 3. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 goes to 3, 2, 1, 4. Okay, so tau 4 sigma is now equal to, let's see, sigma takes 1 to 2, tau 4 takes 2 to 2, so 1 goes to 2. Sigma takes 2 to 3, 3 goes to 1, so we have 2, 1. 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 4, so 3 goes to 4. 4 goes to 1, and 1 goes to 3, so we have 4, 3, okay? Um, let's use tau 1 again, so we have tau 1, tau 4, sigma. 1 goes to 2, 1 
1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, so we get 1 goes to 1. 2 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2, so we get 2 goes to 2. 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 4, so 3 stays on 4. 4 goes to 3, 3 goes to 3, so 4 stays on 3. Okay, and then next, after applying tau 1, we can apply tau 3. Okay, which will switch 3 and 4. So we get tau 3, tau 1, tau 4, sigma. So tau 3 is this guy here. So we get 1 goes to 1, 1 goes to 1, so that stays the same. 2 goes to 2, 2 goes to 2, that stays the same. 3 goes to 4, and then 4 goes to 3, so 3 is going to go to 3. And then 4 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4, so 4 is going to go to 4. Okay, so sigma in this case is also equal to tau 3, tau 1, tau 4. So we found two different transpositions that will give us the same expression. Okay, so the number of transpositions occurring may not be the same. We can find other transpositions, maybe one with 5 or 7. But there is a theorem here, theorem 2, which says that the transpositions must remain even or odd. So if, if, a, if a permutation has an even number of transpositions, then any other possible combination of transpositions must also be an even number. And if it has an odd number of transpositions, same, same reasoning. Any other possible combination of transpositions must be odd as well. And we will cover that in the next section, in the next video. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Take care and bye-bye. This video was part of my series on Basic Mathematics by Sergey Lang. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord and support me on Patreon. Thanks a million.